Hello everyone, your beloved commander here. Hold on, gonna have to wait about this. I might as well do late night streams like every night, cause like fuck it. I just like doing it. I don't know why, I just do. <laughs> uh oh. But, uh, yeah. So, just came back from my D&D campaign. I actually want to talk about this one this time. It's been a while since I've talked about, uh, like, the D&D campaign I'm a part of. As, uh, yeah. Let, let's get the talking. Because this is going to be an interesting one. I got 73 followers now on Twitter slash X. What the heck? Fucking awesome. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. We're going to get the playing power world here in the minute. Hey, you can hear it in the background. So... Boys and girls and like people of all types and ages, like my cadets. Oh, by the way, I got the uh, assault rifle legendary. I love it. It's really powerful. Check out that attack power. This thing hits like a motherfucking truck uh, when you shoot it. Uh, with my Palmon, let's go check their stats because like. All week, I've been grinding so hard. So you see Griever here, you know, like, he's got purple. He's in the purple now with his defense and his attack and health. And, like, his attack's in the gold, finally. Surge here. You see how Surge is surging? Cooler be chilling. Kira be kicking. And slash be slashing. So, yeah. Each and every one of these Palmon are like... A lot... Each My core Palmon team is at a higher attack, defense, health average. All that. But this is my go-to party. And they're really doing well for each other. But... As we get into the gameplay... I want to talk about the D&D campaign tonight. Then I went to, like, my local, like, shop. You know, where, like, me and the, you know, our just local, like, misfits go play Dungeons & Dragons. Not gonna lie. We actually get along pretty well now. Uh, I do have a problem of, like, trying to help out with certain conversations. And I have to work on... Like, not interrupting others. I do have a problem with that. But despite all that... The campaign went pretty well. We did okay. More than okay, actually. So, this time, like, oh, we had to go assassinate, like, this, um... Vampire King. It seems he had some mad scheme to work for the main, like, evil, that is, like, an evil corrupted dragon. And, like, we weren't cool with that, you know, like, evil corrupted dragon trying to take over the world, all that kind of rud, you know, like, you know, set it on gold from fire of flames. Uh, my character deals with him for some reason, like, since, like, I was defiant to him. 
somehow he's trying to influence me to like obviously join his side because of the grief of my wife being dead of course in the D&D campaign so that's a thing So the evil dragon's trying to tempt me to go to his side, promising me my dead wife's return. I ain't about that. I ain't about to join the evil Dorgan. I'm, I'm not going to destroy the world. So, yeah. In this, we have the Slimoid. We have our wizard. We have our chaotic cleric. We have the paladin, and I'm the fighter of the group, of course. So, main thing is, in this session, like, previous session, we had to, like, obviously try to make peace with this vampire king. His people are suffering outside of the castle. They're starving. They're, they're literally living the worst time of their lives because of the king. And the king really doesn't care. The vampire king doesn't care. But his prince, his son... The vampire prince that is half vampiric, half like human, uh, kind of like a Castlevania type scenario with that. Obviously, I like my dungeon masters are really good with this stuff. And I'm gonna be real, I kind of like it. So, in this session, like, oh, the king gave us an option to kill this like dragon. We thought maybe we can get the dragon on our side first, you know, like maybe we can have him help us take care of the king. Uh, according to like background research on like dragons like this, we found out, oh, they can't be trusted. Purple dragons in D&D &D are like very evil, like chaos evil. And they can end up like influencing you through their magical powers to do whatever they want. If they want you to spin around like a ballerina while killing all your friends, they will. They want you to obviously go over there and like mess up the female member of your team and obviously and all that kind of stuff. I'll leave that to your imaginations. You know, a purple dragon can make you do that. There is no resistances against their mind control, basically. It's nearly impossible is what I'm saying. We found this out. It's only a young purple dragon, but we found out we couldn't reason with it. So we were like, all right, instead, we're just going to assassinate the evil vampire king that's trying to uh, go through with, with like this hidden plot we found out in this session. Because we found out, oh, his main scheme is to activate an ancient crystal and turn all of his people into a loyal... Uh, zombie army for like the main ba bad dragon this dragon like got corrupted by this ancient item that was supposed to uh, be for greater good but since the ritual got like the process of the ritual and the item to help it become a greater good because it was already good but it was about to become the greatest savior of the planet due to the ritual being interrupted and Corrupted, like obviously the dragon became evil. The Dorgan became a problem because of some dumbass that interfered with the ritual that didn't know what the hell was going on. That's a thing. Now, uh, despite all this, our group is supposed to find a way to put the Dorgan down for good, you know, like keep them from trying to take over the world type scenario. No, we'll buy. First, destroying it by fire and remaking it into what he desires. So our group's trying to kill this Dorgan. This evil, corrupted Dorgan. Now, this vampire king is literally working for the evil Dorgan. Not gonna lie. Like, the king be dead. Now the prince is, like, going to lead his people to a peaceful, like, future. And it's now part of, like, oh, his kingdom is now part of the resistance faction that's trying to stop the evil dragon. There's also this, like, phoenix order of knights that are, like, just as evil as the dragon, if not 
less evil. So, we're going to have to deal with him. This Order of Knights have the, has the has power to, even if you kill them, they revive from the ashes that is left over from their body. Oh, and FYI, the knights that are literally controlled by the dragon are also, like, very explosive. They blow up. You put them down, they explode. They go boom. Uh, this is a thing. It's messed up, but what villain doesn't come up with, like, some overcomplicated, like, mess up plan to try to, like, take over or destroy or replace everything and the dragon's like plan is to like to destroy everything by righteous fire and replace it in the world he thinks is best fit for him to rule now the vampire was like on the dragon's side like we ended up doing a multitude of things. Uh, one of the things is, is obviously, like, our paladin cast, like, daylight. That which did 20 clicks of damage, like, every time, every second he moved. So every time he moved, like, oh, the vampire was going to take, like, you know, daylight damage. So we were already affecting him as he was trying to get to the crystal to activate this power to turn his people into zombies and there's these like zombie necromancers that were trying to turn all the people into zombies through a cauldron the cauldron was the chemical catalyst for the crystal well, it was more like it was the corrupted power source for the crystal to uh, do what it was supposed to do our wizard ended up destroying the cauldron, destroying the rest of the power source for the crystal. Our paladin wizard then flew up to the crystal. They ended up putting up a magical barrier. And, well, the paladin royally smited the crystal and it exploded. Normally you think, oh, wait a minute. If this crystal is explosive, wouldn't it kill the paladin? Well, in this D&D campaign, he got a, a, a sacred relic for his shield, a marking, called a Bahamut's, like, protection or something like that. It's like some kind of sacred marking that allows him to survive damage. Like, damage go down to zero, but he's still flung um, to the side. Anybody in his way, when he's flung, literally takes damage. I kid you not, you know, he... He went right into the wizard, and they went right into the wall after, like, the barrier failed because the um, explosion was so volatile. I thought that was funny, and, like, the wizard was, like, like the guy that's, like, you know, our wizard is, like, I'm okay with a thumbs up. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm in the wall right behind the paladin, but I still live. And, like... <laughs> I love that. I love my D&D &D group. Like, at first, I thought they didn't want me around or they didn't like me, but lo and behold, they proved me wrong. And I'm so glad they gave you this chance to be a part of it, of this campaign. So, like, we play through, you know, obviously. We end up going to the, this, like... A special ball, and since like the paladin was like a seen family e royalty or something like that, you know, he was able to get in no problem. Like he's part of a royal family. He he's got special privileges. I mean, what uh, what like knight part of a royal lineage doesn't have special privileges in D and D? I, I don't know, but this is how our paladin is part of a royal family. And he was able to get in the air, no sweat. And, like, the Slimoid was, like, in a jar. The Slimoid was in a jar, holding, like, all the Paladin's weapons and hers. Like, obviously, because the Slimoid's, like, a female Slimoid. 
Well, non-gender, really, but it, it assumed the form of basically females, or, like, whatever it wants. The plasmoid is, like, rogue and barbarian in fighting styles, or classes, and, like, that's pretty cool. Like, you know, the slimeoid, like, it likes violence. Uh, that'd be a thing, I'm kind of... I kind of find it kind of cool. I find it a little bit, like, interesting, if you will. Now, I bring up the Plasmoid because the Plasmoid ends up delivering the final shot against the Vampiric King. It's due to, like, basically, because the way she's made, the character's made, when it does an attack with its psychic daggers, it always crits. Like, every roll always crits. And not only that, but she absorbed holy water earlier from a holy natural spring in a forest. So, since, like, the vampire was, like, a full-fledged vampire, that means the holy water in D&D &D did a lot of damage. To the vampire king. As you think normally, all oh, the crits would uh, do like, a lot of damage, but then, like, dipped in holy water, and then that increased the damage even more, because, like, she had to do three rolls. Uh, one for the normal damage, one for the crit calculation, and then one for the weakness calculation. And after, like, I think it was, like, a set of five dice for the normal calculation, Two more dice for, obviously, like, a like crit calculation. And another two for, like, obviously the weakness. She ended up shoving the daggers by throwing them in the king's throat. At this time, the king was already dead, but he was being controlled by the evil dragon. And the evil dragon was causing the king, the dead king to fight his son. Real messed up stuff. Real dark. But, like, our plasmoid, like, rogue slash barbarian type just ended up throwing the daggers into, like, the guy's mouth and, like, finally putting it into, like, his long evil monologue that the dragon was making him do to his son. The son was about to, like, you know, I'm a vampire too, I don't deserve to rule this kingdom. And I decided to stop the vampire, the, um... Like the sun. I go like, look, despite what your father has done, I put my hand on like the prince's shoulder. I go, despite what your father has done, you have an honor bound duty to your people to lead them and guide them to a better future. If not who, if not you, then who would? They respect you. They love you. If you do this, you not only doom their future, you disgrace their honor. The, the DM said the prince thanked me and became part of the alliance because of what my character did. Because, like, my character's like, he's a fighter, he's a warrior, he was a literal soldier for a fallen empire, like, over 10,000 years ago. Because, like, I, I was asleep. I was asleep for over 10,000 years. I love that he did it in that fashion because, like, he knows, like, I'm a nerd. He knows, like, I love all this anime stuff and video games. And the ten, like, after 9,000 years I've slumbered, who dares awaken me? He put that in such an interesting way because, like, I loved it. And, like, yeah. Really freaking awesome. Like, my dungeon master? One of the, my, for my first dungeon master. I will admit, he's one of the, if not coolest people I have ever met for my first Dungeons and Dragons campaign. And I will admit, everything I'm learning from Dungeons and Dragons are helping out my own content that I'm planning to create in comic strips. So I'm not only learning how to play Dungeons and Dragons, I'm learning how to perfect my story even more for like my VTubers like 
pre-origin story before we became a VTuber. And, well, we ended up putting down the vampire after, like, casting Holy a Light while he was in flight. And he rammed right into this room. Uh, across, like, this spot, like, around this spiraling staircase. And eventually, like, he got up and, and ran off into, like, this one room. Where the final battle would be fought between, like, our group and him and his son would confront him we end up putting down the evil old vampire like i said influencing the son i ended up influencing the son to do the right thing he was literally like a prince and he had an honor bound duty to serve his kingdom to lead them to a better future and by the end of the session we found out oh we got over 10 thousand experience so we went from level like i think it was like six to seven now and we are almost at the premise of level eight killing a vampire king ended up making us so freaking strong and now i gotta like reassess my character page for like all hip increase and there's even like a point average for change for like oh my martial arts technique so like my fighting style so i got a point ain't average bonus for like my dice plus three i love that so um our uh, cl chaos cleric that washes up uh worships the traveler god basically in D, D. um he can now like end up changing himself into anything that he has seen so like he can he can literally be a ditto and transform himself into anything he sees or he's seen or come in contact with And now we got to, like, oh, adjust our characters for the next campaign. I love that. You find out so much during your first D&D &D campaign. Let it be known, playing Dungeons & Dragons, eventually you learn a lot. About how to, like, make your own stories. Or, like, you're already making one, how to make it better. You know, like how to adjust your characters in a special fashion or even the add of like what you actually want, aunt, but now you can learn how to perfect what you want. I not only joined Dungeons and Dragons to perfect my own story, but to gain like, you know, new new people like I can call like oh friends, you know, like or acquaintances and stuff like that. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry, Wampo. Wampo got womp. Wampo got womp. But, uh, yeah. So, this campaign, I mean, my first campaign has been such an eye-opener. And I'm so glad that I've learned so much so far. Now, I will say this. Like, Dungeons & Dragons is not for everyone. Like, unless you're a hardcore, like, RPG player, I will mention, like, Dungeons & Dragons is not fit for everyone. And it really depends on your DM and how they are. My DM, Dungeon Master, DMs for short for Dungeon Master, he's really open sandbox, you know? Like, he's open up to ideas, interpretations. You know, like, new items. As long as it fits within, like, D&D. &D. If it doesn't fit within D&D, &D, he's, like, in some shape or fashion, you know, like, it's, there's, he's not gonna add it. If it doesn't fit within the Dungeons & Dragons campaign he's making, 
or if it doesn't fit within like the overall arcing story or the mechanics of the game in some way because it's got to work with the story it's got to work with the characters Urs of the campaign everybody's got to be okay with it and it's got to work within dungeons and dragons like law with our dungeon master he's really open box but at the same time he still follows the codes of dungeons and dragons and he feels like it's important to have this because like you know not only like makes sense but it makes it where like it's not like disingenuous where it turns people away from the campaign he doesn't want that this is not his first campaign either he's made others but others have fallen apart due to the party like not liking the campaign or like not having the chance to like you know bring their own creative spark as long as it doesn't ensue a lot of chaos there's stability, it follows the laws of Dungeons and Dragons and the story the Dungeon Master is making, then Dungeon Masters will let it be. At least some of the time. Not most of the time, but my Dungeon Master, like, he's pretty chill, he's pretty cool. I, I like him. I love him. He's really, really nice. When you get into Dungeons and Dragons, this is usually not a thing. Like, a lot of Dungeon Masters are not like my Dungeon Master, but there is a few like him out there. And to him, what's important to the game is where everyone can enjoy it and have freedom of expression, but as long as it's not too out of control. Where, like, oh, it'll make the group split apart. He said he's had groups before that, before like that, and he gave them too much creativity and individuality, and it made everything fall apart. Me, like, I'm sticking a lot with, like, the heavy swordsman fighter class, obviously, because, like, I, I like big swords. Like, I I'm a sword guy. I love giant swords. I like, I like beating things with a giant sword. I don't know what to tell you. And, yeah. Now we're going to be going to, like, this, uh... A Warforged Kingdom next. As we're going to get new equipment and weapons for our next mission at this Warforged Kingdom. So, for me, I'm going to get like some electrical crossbows, bolts for like my crossbow, and I'm going to be getting some explosive arrows from it. I currently have a giant sword, a cross, a, a mini crossbow. With, like, obviously regular crossbow bolt. And I have a great sword called Tidal Breaker. Right now, it's not what it used to be, as Tidal Breaker is broken. It is severely rusted, beat up, still usable, but it has three elemental gems we have to come across. That is water, lightning, and wind. Tidal Breaker is supposed to launch out these elements from the blade, kind of like Optimus Prime's like Saber from Transformers Prime. But it's more element-based attacks instead of just pure energy slashes that come out. So yeah, water, fire, and lightning is what the uh, Tidal Breaker is able to use. And overall, I can't wait to have that sword back at full power. I will have to say this, with a lot of dungeon masters out there, they really don't have the mindset of ours. You know, like, they either want it, you know, 100% their way, and that chases off people. You know, like, when they are like, is 100% my way or, like, no way? That chases away people from playing Dungeons & Dragons with the Dungeon Master. It's my hot, my professional opinion from what I've seen from my Dungeon Master and how everybody loves him and the story he's making. 
that he's so innovative and creative, open-minded, and I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna lie, he can be a little bit manipulative. But then again, he goes like, don't overthink things and make your brain hurt. Because you start overthinking things in Dungeons and Dragons, you know, obviously from like battle strategies, that point of view, it kind of ruins the session. And it, that causes arguments amongst the group. From the Dungeon Master, he has this happen before. Or, obviously, with other Dungeon Masters, not him, he's seen it. And I guess this is, like, why he became a Dungeon Master. He felt like all the other Dungeon Masters that are, are like, not necessarily like him, ends up destroying their own campaigns and having people leave it. He's seen it all before, and why he became a Dungeon Master is obviously... So, well, have a group of people that, a whole bunch of nerds, a whole bunch of bird nerds come together, play a game, love playing it, and have it more of an open sandbox while still following the laws of D&D &D and the universe the Dungeon Master is coming up with, you know? To him, that's what's important right now. He wants this to... Be fun, be stable, be where everyone's happy, but there's not so much happiness, it destroys the group. Uh oh, I stole the Wampo's baby, he's mad. Or at least she's mad. We're bolting. We stole the child, we're bolting. Surge, let's bolt. Let's go, girl. So, yeah. Let it be known, Dungeons and Dragons is very complicated. To keep everyone unhappy and engaged, while not destroy the group, is a dungeon master's job. While developing a story, Having an open mind and making sure everything works and is stable and is fun where everyone can enjoy it. That is the job of a dungeon master. I've only been a part of this for like three or four sessions. And 100% I can say right here and now, I absolutely love Everything about this campaign it is my first one, and I'm having such a blast of an experience. Uh oh, I pissed off the doggy. Doggy be mad. What's that? Um, chowder. Yeah, we don't need it. Oh, God. Yeah, we don't need to be dealing with us right now. We don't have the ammunition. Learn to choose your battles, everyone. You also learn that in Dungeons and Dragons, obviously. You can't just go, like, a strong head in all the time. You get fucked up. You can't headstrong everything. 
as I started playing, like, I wanted to be like that headstrong soldier that just jumps in the battle. I find out how fast you get fucked up doing that in Dungeons & Dragons. I started listening to, obviously, my fellow players, so, like, you know, I don't end up making the same mistakes during the sessions. Let it be known, even though you want to, like, be like, I want to kill everything, you know, like, I want to I wanna beat up something. Like, that doesn't always work in real life. On Dungeons & Dragons, there's a different way to approach things. And kind of like with the prince, when, like, obviously the character was finally going to put the stake in him because he was afraid he's going to be like his father, I ended up helping the prince through his issues and influencing him to make the right decision for his people. That shows a level of growth, not only in my character, but in my story writing course, like I'm going to be go doing. As when you create your own VTuber lore and all this kind of stuff and story, like this stuff is needed. To understand story writing is important. I've always had a lot of years to work on like this fictional universe if my Yu-Gi-Oh career ever tanked. If it ever fell through, this was a backup plan. For like being a content creator, let it be known you should always have a backup plan or several for success. I will admit, as a content creator myself, I do constantly mess up. I'm not perfect. You know, I'm human as well. And so are VTubers. We we are still human, despite how hard that is to believe. We're still all human beings. We freak up all the time. It's literally in our nature to freak up. Much like the tor much like you know, Terminator told John Connor in Terminator Two. It's in our nature to destroy ourselves. It's also in our nature to make mistakes. Mistakes have always been made. It's in human nature to make mistakes. It's in human nature to love, to hate, to mess up, to adjust, to admit. You know, obviously, amongst anything, amongst, like, any other being, in any other game, in any other world, if there is life out there in the fourth dimension other on Earth, let it be known, Earthlings have to be some of the most, not only most complicated, easily scared, but the ones that can apply themselves and improve themselves the most. And you not only learn this from, like, growing up as a person, but you learn this in D&D. Dungeons and Dragons can end up teaching you so much. Some things you already know, but not to an extent. And others you learn. And through, like, just being human. The one thing about humanity is... What makes us so resilient? What makes us so strong? The willingness to adapt, change, grow, fix ourselves. Of course, there is humans out there that never want to do that. That blame everybody else for their failures. I admit, that I have failed so much in my life. Sometimes it's in my control to fix it. Sometimes there's certain things you can't fix. Some things are beyond fixing. 
when people attack people online, it's not only because they think, oh, humans can't, these people can't adjust themselves or fix themselves. We always can. It's just admitting that we have a problem, admitting we have issues, and finding help to fix it. Like I said, humans are the most complicated species ever to exist in any type of game or format. Because we can apply ourselves, or we have others help us apply ourselves. It's what makes the human race so uniquely diverse, special, but at the same time horrifying. The human race has got to be the most complicated thing ever to end up putting in a game correctly. Do I ever think that a proper human race or like a human race compared like us in the fourth dimension could ever be properly applied to a game, to a story, to a point where it's so similar, but at the same time stand out to be its own unique functional race. No, because in the long run, if you do that, it destroys everything. Like the Terminator says, it's in our nature to destroy ourselves. And if we accurately put humanity, our humanity into a game, it's going to end up destroying itself. Like I said, you learn about these things when you play Dungeons and Dragons. And this is a lot of what I've been learning. Me as a human being, I love to learn. I love to listen. I love to read. I love to apply myself. Everything I'm working on. Much like a dungeon master, even though I'm not one, I will never admit I'm a dungeon master. I am learning so much from a world building's perspective, from everything. And it's a real eye opener. Y'all probably will never understand how it feels to go out of your way to play a game of Dungeons and Dragons with just a group of individuals. that are so chaotically indifferent and just weird that it functions. Functions like a well-oiled machine. You learn this and you gain knowledge, you gain friends, you get so much from all that. And that's what I got from them. And I'm still getting it. I'm still learning. I'm still adjusting. And everything with them that I'm learning from all of them does help me. be that of just of a bit more of a better like person, a player, a content creator. The fact of the matter is, 
it works. When you're a part of a group like this, you need to function as a team. You need to listen to the people around you and come up with a plan for success. You learn so much and not everyone learns so much within their first D&D campaign like I have. Because I have such an open mind. Compared to most people these days, they really don't have this open mind. I mean, to stand there, listen, and learn. Or sit there, listen, and learn. Maybe you have one of them. Maybe you listen. Maybe you don't. Maybe you learn from looking around you. Maybe you learn by listening. But it certainly has shown a lot of people like do one of the two and literally couldn't care less about the other. They want to do their own thing and they don't want to learn when they play a game like this. For Dungeons and Dragons sessions to be a success, you have to have an open mind and understand everyone's character's goals, dreams, and aspirations, not only as a dungeon master, but as a fellow player and enjoyer. You need to look, you need to learn, you need to listen. Look, listen, learn, have an open mind. And then you too can end up trying to do what I'm trying to do for my VTuber. Every human has the capacity to do this, but not every human wants to apply themselves in such a manner. what I'm saying. If you just come to an understanding and play Dungeons and Dragons with open mind and is willing to read and learn and listen, watch and get a feel for like what your other players and Dungeon Master are trying to do, you too. I will admit Oh, 23 dog points. That was a level 22. Nice. Amount of shotgun shells. But despite all this, when you play campaigns of d d you learn. You need to learn. You need to listen. You need to understand. That is never easy for a lot of people. Some people don't want to learn. They don't want to listen. They don't want to compromise. And they want to do their own thing and be selfish. The one thing you can never be in Dungeons and Dragons is completely selfish. Yes, you can be some selfishness, but to be completely selfish and selfish in Dungeons and Dragons will literally destroy the group from the inside. And that's what our Chaos Cleric learned. Like, we were all, like, we were worried he was going to cause the party to fall apart. And we had to, like, let him know, hey, what you're doing is not only endangering the party in the game, but it's endangering the party. He's fun. He understands that now. He realizes that now. And he's willing to be more inclusive and understanding 
and he's becoming a little less selfish because of it. That is literally my monitor officer of my live streams from time to time when he shows up. The one that calls himself Joey. We call him Joey. And I will admit, he is a Joey. He is a Joey. He always will be. Nothing wrong with that. I'm still learning how to make the story for my VTuber better. It's a work in progress. And Dungeons and Dragons is helping me to achieve it. My Dungeon Master has made me realize so much. In just less than five sessions, I have learned so much from my Dungeon Master and the people around me of how to be someone that is more understanding, caring, and even that, more inclusive. It also helps people be that of a more effective. When I did that live stream, we're just talking about Asmin Gold. We were just talking about Asmin Gold and his life choices. Like, I do what I do other live streams like that. From a retrospect from someone like me that has gone out and met people throughout his life, you know, got actual friends he goes meet, and I end up talking about topic. it's like, oh, Dr. Disrespect, and like how he disrespected all content creators. Share that of Asmund Gold and like how his unhealthy health choices could have endangered his life. And being that unclean and unhealthy like that will endanger a human's life. I talk about these subjects like this because in the long run, it comes from somebody that's made his own mistakes. And has applied himself. Maybe not their mistakes, if not entirely. I've never made mistakes like them. Like Dr. Disrespect, you know, I don't talk to minors. I don't talk to kids. Fuck them kids. Devin Foxy that attacked me without showing any probable evidence. You know, like somebody ends up attacking me, I'm going to show the evidence. Even if they keep it or delete it, the evidence is out there now of what they did. They're even like jumping into the Mega Man and community issue. I really shouldn't have, but I'm a Mega Man fan. And I felt my voice had to be heard in some way to help them. Because I thought it's like that one guy, he wasn't going to like admit his wrongdoings. And he was going to let the Mega Man community destroy itself. Waiting for him to do something because he wasn't going to do it. He was going to let them suffer and fall apart. I did that to help them. It wasn't the right thing. It wasn't the wrong thing. But it's something that had to be done. And because of my actions jumping into it, I'm going to be real. It resolved an issue. It wasn't right. It wasn't wrong. But it's something that had to be done. Sometimes doing the right thing isn't doing the right thing. The meaning behind that is sometimes you have to do what you have to do to make things better. Not only for yourself, but everyone around you that enjoys something. 
while protecting it. I took it upon myself to jump into that controversy because I saw what that individual was like and what he was doing and how he was going to destroy an entire community. Sometimes doing the right thing isn't doing the right thing. And rather they love you or hate you for it. You do it because you feel it's the right thing while not doing the right thing. Sometimes the greater good can never be achieved without doing something incredibly reckless. I don't expect ever the Mega Man community to admit what I did had a, a good side effect or a bad one. I don't expect them to do that. As a matter of fact, I expect them to hate me for what they did. What I did. You know? Because I wasn't normally a part of their content creation platform. They can be the way they want to be. They can think the way they want uh, about me. They can do whatever they want to do. I did what I did so I could help them. And sometimes that's all you can do. Yes, I endangered my own career by doing so. But sometimes, if not all the time, when you do something like this, doing the right thing, I mean, is it doing the right thing? Would I advise people to do it? Hell no. Because you get the results that I got from them. You really do. You get these results. And then they oust you and scorn you and chase you out. Or they never want you to do a part of it at all. Sometimes to achieve the greater good, you need to do a great evil. You also learn that Dungeons and Dragons. Sometimes it's not, not always right what you achieve, or right at all, or sometimes the right thing to do without them even knowing it, them hating you for it. I don't ever expect the Mega Man community content creators to ever forgive me for what I've done. But I did what I did. I felt it was going to have a positive. And I was right. In a way, it did. But in a way, it didn't. And now they never want me to be a part of it. I never wanted to be a part of them in the first place. But I did what I did for the sake of not them or me or justice. I did what I did for the sake of the blue bomber. Someone like the individual did what he did in that community will never admit his wrongdoings. People like that that will never admit they fucked up. Times you learn, not only as a human being, not only as a gamer, but a man. When you fuck up, you need to own up for it. Become a better person. Not everyone does that. Some people are incapable of admitting their wrongdoings. And they become like that one individual. Claims everyone other than admitting his own shortcomings. And oh boy, did he have shortcomings.
that was on him. What he did. What I did as a whole helped, but it also hurt them. I've seen individuals like him destroy an entire fan base and product line because he ends up buying time to allow it to do so. His plan was finally destroy everything about the Blue Bomber. He had enough them his form of content creation. He was going to destroy it all. Because he's such a selfless, selfish and worthless individual. Only knows how to spit at misery and destruction. People always liked it. It's hard to notice them. Hard to under try to help them. Some say sometimes it's impossible. I'm not going to sit here and lie to y'all and say, yeah. It is entirely impossible. No, these people can be helped. Sometimes some people don't want to help them. After so many times that they hurt them. When you hurt people so many times. Like he did. Learn these people. Beyond your type of help, and this is where you have to get them professional help. That individual that almost destroyed an entire fan base of the Blue Bomber, he planned this from the start. He implemented himself into their community with one selfish goal, destroy it all. He gained their friendship, their knowledge, their wisdom, and their ideas and hopes and dreams so he can end up destroying it. For his own selfish gain. Individuals like him. That do that. Will never be seen. As true game. What makes a true game? Someone that can learn from their losses. Be a better person. Be a better gamer. In the long run, if they're a content creator, be a better content With me, I've learned a lot from Dungeons & Dragons, growing up being a human. People are always capable of change. This matters if you are the one it either helps them with that change or send them somewhere where our people can help them that change and are qualified for. If you have someone, a friend or a family member that you know and love and cherish that is going through exactly what they've been through. And in the long run, is incapable of applying themselves appropriately in any form, shape, or manner. 
Do not ignore them. Do what you have to. Not only for the sake of them, but everyone around them. Life lessons from someone like me that y'all learn. Some people may not want to learn it. Others may be like, I'm hearing this for the first time from someone that I've never even met. And go, should I take this seriously? Or should I ignore it? I say on to you. Do with these lessons as you will. I can only bring them to the forefront. And tell y'all. What I think is right and wrong. And how you should help others. From your own retrospect and understanding. Of the situation. Sometimes you burn bridges by doing this. Other times bridges are never built from it. But you learn people like me talking about situations like this where you can apply yourself and end up helping out others with their own issues there are people out there that are worse off than you realize and sometimes they just need that person in their life to go you got a problem an actual problem and you need help Do you know what makes the difference between a civilian hero and somebody that is a hero that's law enforcement? Medical or all staff, law enforcement, or even that in the fire department? Do you know what makes a real normal hero? People that take affirmative action. To help out others that are far more worse off than them. That what makes a normal Joe into that of a super Joe. People that are willing to do the right thing. Despite rather it brings them pain or not to do so, does not matter. Because when you help them in this fashion, you become a real joke, a real hero, a real civilian hero. At first, you'll never be appreciated for it or understood for it. People will say you're part of the problem. But then eventually figure out, oh, you were wrong all along. You did help us. I guess we didn't want to accept it in the first place. That's our mistake. The Mega Man community will never know the truth of why I did this. Because they don't watch my live streams or content. Because in their mind, I'm the absolute worst for their future. Because I jumped in today trying to help them. They will never see me as someone that helped. They will only see me as someone that was part of the problem. Why I made that commander's log could peace be achieved. Between the Mega Man content creation community, content creators, and the VTubers. I made this one reason. To admit that I fucked up. And admit sometimes in a way 
by how good what something you did or how bad or how effective it was a good thing for another community that you weren't normally a part of you will be one of those unnamed heroes that will never be appreciated by them and they will darn right outright hate you for what you did for a while but eventually they'll realize what you did had a positive effect and they'll apply themselves it's not always effective it doesn't always happen right away you do stuff like this eventually they realize yeah did help us It'll never be right away. May take a couple of days, weeks, even a couple of months, maybe a year before they realize what that person did help them. Maybe one day they'll admit it. Maybe overall they'll just hold on to their denial. One thing is for certain. No, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Mega Man Online community doesn't like me right now. One day they'll see what I did had a positive effect. Whether they like it or not, it's not the question. The question is, did it have an effect? Yes, it did. But I know I'll never be welcome amongst their peers what I did. One day they realized what I did had a positive effect whether they like it or not. And I'll be one of those unknown names in their history books outside source that implemented change. in a positive manner. Now with all that said, let it be known content creators have a responsibility not only to help each other out, Rather they're part of the same platform or not. Oh, that's a lot of wood. <laughs> or rather it's obviously accepted. Rather accepted or not, it's not the question or the answer. The question is, rather you help them or not, it's how um, we're overall remembered. I live my life by a simple mantra. See your world in a grain of sand and see how worthless life truly is the scheme of the universe. What you do with your life matters. How you who write your story, write your book, will leave behind a story. What you do with it own do what I'm saying is rather it's right or wrong with your story is up to you. how you'll be remembered for sometimes you end up doing the right thing that makes you into the villain sometimes you do the wrong thing that makes you into the hero or sometimes you do the right thing that makes you the hero Times you do the absolute worst thing that makes you confirm to be a 100% villain. I became a VTuber not only for or, or my future, my friend's future that want to join me on this journey and help each other succeed. Uh, also possibly seeing a future as a content creator 
but I also did this to be a better person. Sometimes the lines get blurred and you make a disrespectful old decisions and end up harming others all together and it never has any good outcome. Sometimes you stay in your own corner. Sometimes there's content creators like me, ones that jump into situations like this, trying to help others. Sometimes they'll be accepted. Other times they'd be like, shouldn't have done anything at all. It's really left up of how you do it and proceed with it. I will be one of those unknown etched individuals that ended up helping them with their own issue and may, forcing them to go forward and reveal everything or the other one ended up destroying it all. I will never be accepted or appreciated by them. I'm okay with that. type of person I am. I'm writing my own story. Being a kind, responsible individual online while trying to help as many as possible. While entertaining the masses, making them knowledgeable and aware. Maybe that's not my job. Maybe I'm not qualified for it. But god dang, if it's not making me look like the most responsible goddamn individual I have ever seen in my life. While also being irresponsible. That's the difference between someone like me and someone like that Mac. Someone that like, uh, creates content like me and someone that creates content like Devin Foxy. Someone that creates content like I do compared to that of the content of Dr. Disrespect. Others rather or want to have fame, fortune, fans and bitches. Others create content. Oh, the nest is back. See this wildlife habitat made by these guys right there out in the open. Right there is where a whole bunch of suppresso eggs spawn from time to time. And they will gangbang the heck out of you to protect their children. What an interesting sight of Palmon nature, isn't it? They're all there just lying about. I write their shit once, I'm not gonna do it again. As long as they don't mess with me, I won't mess with them right now because like they're not invading my base, I'm not invading their home. One thing I love about Power World that's more inclusive compared to Pokemon. Little things like that they're designing. See Palmon in their natural habitat that way. Do you have the chance to interrupt them and take them off? You just leave them fuck alone. Just watch them. Realize that it's something special. <laughs> I really love this game and like all the choices it's making. Sometimes I don't agree with its marketing tactics. But I truly believe this game is going to stand out as one of the old time greats. Once it's fully developed and done, people are going to be playing this game for years. From a small group of, group of people making this game, the way they are, doing one hell of a job.
think I need to make this live stream a bit of a video. Admit how, like, I ended up helping them. Even though they never wanted it in the first place. <laughs> I think that would be just prime. The second retrospective power world will come out, like, obviously, after I hit level 50. This is gonna be like a three part like retrospective of like this, of course. I grind the old fashioned way. You know, I don't own do like, you know, like grinding hacks or anything. Like, I like the old fashioned grind. Just the type of guy and gamer I am. I like the old fashioned grind. May take a while, but it's worth it. But there will be like two, three, maybe four parts to Power World. I know three all together. Of this new update. Maybe four. As I want this to come off really good. But everything here right now. Like. I want to unlock like the new weapons eventually. And the new glider. And the new ultimate spear. Look at that thing. That thing looks freaking awesome. And eventually, like, I actually want this to be a good retrospect series of, like, everything, because I do love playing Palmon. It's probably one of the games I'll play for years. I want to touch upon the past two live streams right now before we call it quits for the night. The Resident Evil 4 4th of July livestream. I received an error code that I actually looked into. This is an error code that's sent straight from the game to Capcom. This error code notices when somebody's streaming. Now, I thought this error code only affected, obviously, Discord livestreams. Oh, how wrong I was. The error code that ended up popping, causing my game to crash, was a report. It reported to Capcom that I was live streaming. Now, legally speaking, and I am speaking, you know, like, a U.S. and Japanese law speaking when it comes to games like this. Them implementing such a code is in the is and always will be an evasion of American privacy. They have broke several American privacy law acts to put this in Resident Evil games. I have a couple of reasons and thoughts for why they did this. One, to keep kids from streaming the games. Little kids. They don't want little kids playing Resident Evil. I get that. So more than likely, this is like maybe like a 45% chance of why they implemented into it. Of like why they made it where like Resident Evil can't be streamed. There is a 22% chance that they don't want people to live stream Resident Evil. Because they feel it's not needed for, obviously, the success for it. Because Resident Evil is well known around the world. Everybody knows what RE is. You know, everyone plays it. So they don't want people to stream it. Because, you know, they got enough publicity. There is a good... 18% chance that after the 22 to the literally like, cause like, hold on. We're going from 1 to 100% chance, so like 64% chance 22 that leads to Screw those numbers up.
sixty-four plus twenty-two and eighty-eight. So there's a good sixteen percent chance that Capcom doesn't want people streaming RE4 because they feel it's too violent and graphic in nature. I get that as well. Then there's that two percent chance. Why do they not want people to stream Resident Evil? This is the slimmest reason why they would do this. And I believe Capcom is not like this, especially with Resident Evil or Mega Man. But they want all the money and glory and fame for themselves. I don't think that's the case. This system ended up reporting the gameplay to Capcom, and they shut down the functions of the game. Rather, it's one of these four possibilities for amongst those percentages, I'll never know. But what I do know is the stream, the game obviously was reported and it shut its functions off because I was streaming it. I do know where the code's at. It's hard bedded into the game. Meaning that if I remove it, more than likely the game will cease to function. Hard bedded codes are meant to do this. You remove a hard bedded code, it removes, it stops the game from functioning. I don't know what to tell you. You remove a hard bedded code, it shuts down the entire game. Apex Legends, what the hell happened with it? Well, this falls on my graphics card and Apex being too much for it. I have an RGX card that is a 168RGX card. It's really old, it's really dated, but it still functions, it still works. It was overloading its functions. Until I can get a better RTX card in my, my obviously computer, that functions way better and accepts like games like Apex. Apex streams right now at this point in time at our is gonna be doing a thing. But what about Resident Evil? Well, this relies upon me trying to contact Capcom and letting them know, like, this thing happened. You broke American gamer laws. Do you know what you've done? Capcom is not stupid. They probably know what they did. And they have their reasons. What that reason is right now, I do not truly know. But what I do know, they did it. They did it. And all I can try to do is find some other means to play the game. So RE4 right now, until I can come to some agreement or understanding with Capcom, I cannot play it without them shutting it down on live stream. Guess how it is. It's Capcom's property. And I need to find a way to let them know, hey, like you're breaking the law, punk. I want to stream this game, but at the same time, you're hurting your customer base. And your image. I think they're full aware of this. And they, in a way, may not care. Or they may not want the free publicity. Who knows? But the error code was a shutdown code. When people, when they live stream. And I live streamed. That error code came up and shut down the game. 
I understand game record recording the game does not cause this to shut down. Cause it to shut down. But things such as like live streaming it does. Across Discord, Twitch.tv, or YouTube. Like it shuts down the functionalities of the functions of the game. I am a dip bit disappointed, but right now there's nothing I can do about it. So I'll try to find a different way to get Resident Evil 4 out there for all of you. I thought it was rather witty and smart to do RE4 on the 4th of July. It was original, it was a concept, it was an idea, and it was a good one. But, uh... I think... What happened speaks for itself. Y'all may have noticed, oh, I added more glass, by the way, to my house. I really like what I did right here. Like, obviously, like, you'll be able to see my character take a bath, sort of. <laughs> or, like, take a shite. Then you can see me cooking here. Obviously. Like, if you want to be really creepy, you can just see me sleep. In my bed right here. That's so freaking weird that I did this, but at the same time, I think it's, like, so freaking cool. But, uh, yeah. I think I'm gonna repurpose this live stream about, you know, what I talked about and how the Mega Man community may never appreciate what I did. Or even recognize what I did. And I'm okay with that. They can be the way they want to be. You treat me the way they think is like, you know, their head cannons. I can literally care less about this, but at the same time, I know it hurts me as a content creator. This pains me to know that they have the potential to fix it, this issue with us, but they don't want to. Or they're unwilling to. Either one of the two. Or both of that situation. Uh, thank you for joining me on this live stream, everyone. Like, this was a really late live stream out of the blue. It wasn't, like, obviously, like, meant to happen. But I wanted to talk about my Dungeons and & Dragons and campaign, you know, like, and what I'm continuing to learn from Dungeons & Dragons as a person, but as a gamer. Uh, tomorrow the live streams will happen. Tomorrow we're going to be started working on the new comic. Uh, I decided to... Because I got a unique comment on one of my freaking videos. Like, one of my older ones, actually. It was, um, the attack on Paul, on Snow Village with the Paul and Saltas. And I'm gonna be reformatting that. The assault on Snow Village. In a comic format. I think that's going to be interesting. I mean, I did make the Paul and Salta model. I did make the Jimsy and Snow. Yes, I made the Final Fantasy monster, female monsters, as VTuber models. And I'm going to be showing, like, the Paul and Salta one during the live stream to all of y'all tomorrow. As I'm going to make my next comic is the uh, attack on Snow Village. The assault on Snow Village. I think I'm going to put it when Paul and Salta's invade. Or the invasion of Paul and Salta's. I don't know. Like, I think I'm think I'm going to go with, you know, Seed Secret Comics. The Horny Assault of Paul and Salta's. 
Oh, that's good. See, so you, you secret comics. The assault of the Poland Salta invasion. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's gonna be one hell of a comic. Like it's gonna be a long one too. I'm gonna love that. That's gonna be a long one. Like that's probably gonna take like several streams to develop, maybe two or three, because like it's gonna be such an epic comic. The one I did beforehand. Like, I did that in less than, like, the first part took me less than 30 minutes that premiered. And the other two took me about, like, first I had to, like, do the resource hunting, and then I had to find, oh, like, do the poses of the models, and, the, and obviously, and take photos of those, along with develop, like, the... The VTuber of Foxy, of course. Like his Foxy VTuber form. And uh, then and put it in a pose. And then put it all into a comic. Like, develop it all. Make it make sense. You know, put, like, obviously text into it and all that. That one will probably never be put on video format. But I feel like it's the right thing to do because, like... As soon as that idiot sees that comic on, on video format, he's been like, I'm gonna freaking attack him again. Uh, just froze there. <laughs> that was funny. So, uh, yeah. Like, nah, the first actual visual animated novel, or the visual animated comic, or voice animated comic. The VVC. Voiced. Animate. Voiced. Visual comics, the BBCs, uh, are going to be in development tomorrow. Early tomorrow morning, the first VBC, the assault on Snow Village, will be renamed the invasion of Poland, the invasion of Poland Saltus. Seed Secret Comics, issue one. The invasion of the Poland Sultas. Thank you so much. I've been Commander Devin Lightheart. Check out the live stream tomorrow starting at 11 a.m. I think I'm going to have this one go on longer because, like, we're developing the comic. We're putting it together. You know, we're putting in texting and all that kind of stuff. And this one, this comic's going to take a while. And I'm going to do it on live stream for all of y'all. Like, I want y'all to be a part of this. I want y'all to witness this first 100% official Secret Seed comic being in development. Rachel will make her debut on July 20th. I mean, July 12th, obviously. Around, like, 6 p.m. Or maybe 8 p.m. Where me and my eye girl are debating when she's, like, going to appear and all that kind of crud. But she does finally want to appear as Rachel. Rachel will finally make her appearance. She'll finally be known. They'll all finally be like, hell yeah. I'm questioning my own thoughts towards women right now. <laughs> because uh, that's what, like, nah, Rachel's supposed to make y'all question, like, everything, like, previously. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to make you, make you question your own nuts. All right? That's what I love about, like, creating Rachel's model. It's supposed to make you question your own nuts. Like, how you feel about it? Like, well, do I want the regular type of sh uh, nut holder or do I want, like, that kind of nut holder? <laughs> I mean, holy crud. Like, do I want the previous VTubers that come out or do I want this one? <laughs> That's what Rachel's supposed to accomplish. <laughs> oh, I'm going to horny hell for this one. <laughs> but yeah uh this sunday like i've already started porting over some of the best streams over to like youtube today and sunday is where i'm going to create a couple of original videos to be uploaded through the next week obviously i'm the one that literally like 
creates the scripts, edits the videos, sound work, audio work, the audio work, sound work, you know, like visual olds, all that kind of stuff, you know, like, I don't know what to tell you. I'm the editor. I'm the scripter. I'm the oldest. And everybody else just goes like, I'm with it. <laughs> so, yeah. um, Like, Sunday, I'm going to be, like, working on a couple of videos. Because, like, this is how my schedule works. Like, I stream Monday through Sunday. I uh, am uh, Monday through Saturday. And Sundays, I create a couple of original video concepts. And before anybody asked, the Dr. Disrespect video was already planned. Jeez, get it out of your freaking head. And the ones that literally disliked the video obviously shows they support pedophiles. And groomers. And groomers that be groomed. There's some fucking retarded idiots out there. What the hell is wrong with you people? Those people. Are there. What's wrong with those people? I have no freaking clue. It gives me a headache just thinking about it. Thank y'all so much for watching this live stream. You know, like, I've been Commander Deadline and Heart. You know, I'm your beloved Commander. Like, you know, I'm your responsible beloved Commander. Like, taking command. All that kind of crap, you know. Please like, subscribe, follow. You know, support everything I'm doing and like the people that are going to be a part of, you know, like, so support us, you know, and we'll support you with entertainment for much more our time. A lot more our time. I am an effort. I'm going to be real. Like, everything here we do is not like cheap and it's not free and it's not easy. Like, everything we do here, a lot of time, effort, and, like, if you don't own, like, put the effort into it in time and watch yourself, it will eat you freaking alive. It will, t oh, cadets, and I refuse to let my content eat me alive. You know? So, yeah. Hopefully next live stream, like, I'll have a different, like, presentation style by VTuber, because, like, oh, first you see me, like, with my hands around, like, my belt buckle, now you see them in my pockets. Heck, maybe you see them, like, me doing art on the screen, or, or touching a computer or something like that, or maybe overall you'll see a different pose. I like doing different poses with my VTuber, testing the water as a BC magic mirror. It makes me stand out. Anyways, I think this has gone on long enough. I gotta eat my supper and go to bed. I need my sleep. If I'm not in bed, I don't know what to tell you. Rachel does cock and ball torture MP4. Not in the fun way. But I skip out on nap nap time. I don't like making her angry. Good night, or good morning, or afternoon, wherever y'all are, in the Milky Way galaxy, planet Earth. I'm cutting off transmission.